Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 24 of the Leaco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. This problem is 1457, pseudo paradromic paths in a binary tree. Hope everyone's doing okay. It is Tuesday here. Uh, I am, I don't know, I, I need to fix my sleep schedule. I've been just like, I don't know, going very hard at the gym, but also just, I don't know, everything's a little, I don't know. Uh, just yeah. All right. Uh, today's problem is yeah. Let's let's see. Given a binary tree where nodes rise up from one to nine, a path in the binary tree is said to be pseudo palindromic if at least one permutation of the node values in the path is a palindrome. We turn the number of pseudo palindromic paths going from the root node to leaf node. Okay. This one I f I feel like I did it during the contest or something. I mean I did I f I guess I've done a lot of them during the contest. I think that that um. You know, this problem is more, if you ask me, it's more of a competitive problem than an interview question, only because they, they um, I, I think on competitive questions, um, there is a little bit more of obfuscation, meaning that they they kind of try to confuse you a little bit with different, like, uh, I wouldn't say red errors, but just like misdirection, right, of like, like, hey, this is the core of the problem. And then there's some like weird things on top to kind of, you know, make you maybe kind of like possibly go the wrong way where on interviews very often i mean um not always there's there's you know there are always exceptions and they're always just bad interviews in general where they may give you know it, it's more direct as whether you can just do it or not right uh it, it's more basic it's more fundamental if you ask me in general like i said you know it, it's like some normal distribution and you know sometimes you're not going to that's not going to happen but but uh but yeah uh, and with res respect to this problem, why I, why I say that, right? Is this like this idea of pseudo palindromic? This this pseudo palindromic is, you know, uh, if you know what palindrome is, then it may actually confuse you a little bit because it has nothing to do with being a palindrome, really. It just means that um, it, it's just like a sort of like accounting thing. Though also, uh, I wish they define what a palindrome is. I mean, I, I know what a palindrome is, but but it's still nice to kind of, you know, like, uh, you can't assume everyone knows everything per se. Or even like if they do, maybe some days you just kind of uh, blanking out on definitions, right? I mean, when, when, you, when you're not speaking the same language, it's a little bit tough. And on, on, an, on an actual interview, of course, you could just be like, hey, interviewer, uh, can you define this thing for me? But on, on a on a leak code thing where you know it, it you can't talk to the the problem right I mean or you can but the, there'll be no response it'll just be sadness and darkness and confusion and then you realize you're talking to the computer and before chat GPT they don't usually talk back at least not favorably hmm. anyway uh so yeah. So anyway, I wish to have a definition there, but okay. So what is a palindrome? My right? palindrome, there are really two flavors, right? Um, the um, at least this is the way that I think about it, right? The the even length ones, right? Where you have basically you have A, B, C, and then the you know this matches perfectly, and then the other one is the odd length one. So you have A, B, C, D, C, B, A, and basically the first character is you go to the last character, the second is you go to the second to last, so forth, and the the um, the odd one will have one thing that is um, the the odd one will have one thing that is not. Um, that's not paired up, right? And that's really it, right? Because if you have four of them, four A's, for example, it's still, you know, it's still okay. And in this problem, um, that's really all that means, right? Is that because you, you're able to kind of uh, rearrange and permutate and perm yeah, perm 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 permutate, permutate, right? So that, that means that basically uh, the problem is, um, is that from the root? Yeah, from the root. So that means that is there, or how many is it? Oh yeah, how many? How how many paths are there where each number is appears twice, or or one number appears exactly once, right? Something like that. Is it an or? Hmm. 
and or someone like that, right? You get what I'm saying. Even if my English is a little bit terrible, you, you get the idea. And that that's the core part about this poem. And from that, we can just keep track. Um, do, 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 right? So yeah, so let's say... Yeah, and, and I think, was it yesterday that we have a similar tree problem? I, I don't remember if that was like the, the extra problem that I did, but... Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Mm. So I think I did a tree problem that is actually... I wouldn't say it's similar, but it... it, it well, it was a tree problem, so I, I guess in that way it is all similar. But yeah, uh, so then now we have a traverse. We want to traverse a node, right? And then maybe we can keep track of... And here, we, we only get digits from 1 to 9, so we can actually just use a Boolean array of 9 elements, right? Uh, maybe I could call it parity. And the reason why we have parity... And, Mm. I mean, all right, let, let's actually skip the parity bit. We can do maybe counts. Um, oh, just look at the constraints. I think this should be okay anyway. Um, maybe I'm wrong, we'll see. But the idea behind counts, because uh, basically, um, for the more experts people, or the, the people who are a little bit more experienced, um, I, what I'm doing now is that I'm just trying to kind of do the most straight do it in a way that's most straightforward i know there's a couple of optimizations that you can make but let's see how far this gets us right so yeah so then now we just return traverse um root and then maybe zero times i guess 10 just to be a little bit easier i know that you, there are no zeros so that's why it's a little bit awkward but yeah okay so if node is none that means that um we we keep a we look at the counts right so if um hmm oh not exactly one sorry one number appears uh eh. the choice and the ones is a little bit awkward sorry i said this a little bit weirdly even though like we had an example where you know i meant each number appears even number of times and odd number of times so yeah, sorry. So basically, we just have to kind of check that, right? And it doesn't all have to go all the way to the leaf. It does have to go all the way to the leaf. All right. So in this case, we just we well, the, if node is equal to none, we just return none and uh, return zero because we want to check the leaves. Actually, so the um, the base case is actually if node dot left is none and node dot right is none, then this is the base case. Um, and basically, there is a path here if um, if all x mod two is equal to zero for x in counts, right? That means if they're all even, or uh, hmm, how would I do this in a clean way? I mean, this is obviously uh, the the even one, right? Uh, maybe I do this and then just return one. Um, or if what's the other way of writing it? Hmm. If count x mod two is equal to one for x in counts, if this is equal to one. Is that good enough? I think so. Then we return 1, right? Because by definition, that means everything else is even. Right? Yeah. Otherwise, we return 0. And maybe we can actually do this as uh, less than or equal to 1. And that will be, you know. Right? And then now we have, you know, just return tra traverse node.left plus traverse node.right. Otherwise, right? Because this is not a leaf, so there's no counting anyway. Um, but what we, I am a little bit bad at this actually. Hmm. Yeah, um, I forgot about the count. I mean, I didn't forget about it, but I thought I could clean, do it in a cleaner way, but maybe not. But yeah, okay, fine. Let's just do count of node dot value. We increment by one. We traverse left, traverse right, and then after uh, or before we return. We, you know, we move the count before we return. 
It's a little bit yucky, actually. It becomes a little bit stateful. But yeah. Right. But this is uh, a tree traverso, so I guess that's fine. Right. Hmm. Missing. Oh, whoops. I did forget. Still, after I kind of rewrote it. A number is required. Is that not count? Oh, sum. I'm looking for sum. It's really awkward, kind of. But, uh, because it, it returns to true. Do, 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 do. Did I just return to zero? Does that not? Oh. So some stuff works, but this stuff does not. Hmm. That's odd. Did I miss something? Oh, 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 oh. I, I have to do this before. Um. What a silly mistake. How would that happen? I have, to, I have to add this count before we uh, do the return, so that's why it's a little bit awkward. I'm trying to think how to, how to do this in a clean way, that's why. Um, like, I could do something like this, but then now we have to do like a subtraction here and here. Um, that's kind of awkward. Right, that that is awkward, right? So yeah, so good is equal to hmm. All right, so that now looks good. Um, the code is very yucky, actually. But, uh, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, 1394 day streak. Pretty Gucci. Um, I think there are definitely cleaner ways to do it. I don't know if it's cleaner, but there are definitely different ways to do it. Um, I For today, for now, for these prompts, because I think these are prompts in which you can use BitMask. So if you really want to upgrade yourself, um, try to learn, maybe look up BitMask, um, do it this way, see what I'm doing, and then figure out um, how to use BitMask, right? So the first hint that I would say with respect to that is that what do we use counts for, right? Well, the, the, the thing that we use counts for is that we just kind of do this thing where it's mods too. So that means that we don't actually care about adding or subtracting, or we don't care about the counts. All we care about is whether it is a one or a zero. And then you just come incrementing and subtracting. So in that sense, you can actually reduce all the counts to just one or, uh, you know, a binary bit, right? A zero or one. And in that case, you can kind of do other things with it. But that's the hint that I would say. Um, yeah. I mean, that's all I have for this one. This is pretty, um, I don't know. I think once you look at it the right way, it is pretty straightforward. Um, there's no, not, or in the sense that when I say straightforward, that, that there aren't any like tricky things. You just have to kind of understand it. And like I said, it's a little bit of a competitive e problem because you have to kind of convert all these jumbo pseudo palindromic. Like that's just a, uh, a weird term or, or like a strange term that you have to kind of try to figure out how to understand it in a way and convert it into this word problem in which it is actually, I think, much easier, right? To understand anyway. So yeah. Um, that's all I have for today. Um, this is going to be linear time, linear space. Um, keeping in mind that this is a reference. So um, so actually, this is linear plus, I guess, alpha. But alpha is the size of the alphabet. And the size of the alphabet, in this case, is like 9 or 10. You might want to say it off by 1. But um, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. And yeah. Have a great rest of the week, everybody. I'm going to do the premium palm next. Stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.